Sarah Winchester was married to the second president of the Winchester Feeding Arms Company, but when her husband died, she inherited a fortune. She decided to leave her hometown of New Haven, Connecticut, and she moved out here to California. She started building a house. Sarah Winchester's house could easily be called a mansion today, 160 rooms, and she designed it herself. A very creative woman, even without architectural training. The room that we're standing in was designed so Mrs. Winchester's horse and carriage could come into the carriage hall, so she could get on and off without worrying about the weather outside. But for some reason, Mrs. Winchester was better remembered for her unusual ideas. To be fair, she had a few unusual ideas, like this fourth. This door is completely normal. It opens up like any door and leads to a wall. Thank you for coming on the tour. I hope you had a great time. <laughs> Not the most unusual thing in the house. This house has windows that look onto walls like this. It has doors that lead to drops, plummets, floors down. Around the corner, we've got a staircase. It goes up to the ceiling and it just stops. Why would she build so many dead ends in her house? We don't know the answer, that's why it's the mystery house, but we definitely have our theories. We're going to get to our most popular theory in the carriage house. On the way, we're going to pass by the staircase to the ceiling, and the door to the wall does not work. We're going to go that way instead. <laughs> Please watch your step throughout the house. There are a lot of twists and turns. Some of the floors are in uneven. There are a lot of stairs, too. So please be careful. I'm going to squeeze you guys up. Okay. Watch your step. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You can take a look at a photograph of a young lady on the table there next to the bouquet of flowers. Her maiden name was Sarah Lockwood Hardy. She was born in New Haven, Connecticut in 1839. She was well educated. Sarah could speak four languages, she could play three musical instruments, and she had the wonderful luck to marry her childhood sweetheart and neighbor from down the street, William Wirt Winchester, pictured with the wonderful facial hair in the back. They married in 1862. In 1866, they had a child named Annie. But as you learned in the video earlier, Annie had a rare illness. She was unable to process the protein in her mother's milk. Annie Winchester sadly only lived for six and a half weeks. 1866 was also the year the Winchester Repeating Arms Company was founded by William's father, Oliver Winchester. That was the year they released the Winchester rifle as well. Three years later, Sarah's father also passed away. And then 11 years went by. Now it's 1880, and the Winchester Repeating Arms Company is known around the world. And tragedies start happening again. In May of 1880, Sarah's mother dies. In December of 1880, William's father dies. And William's now the second president of the company. But only for four months. William dies next, in March of 1881. He's only 43. Mrs. Winchester would have seen a psychic, like anybody else in this period of time. What did her psychic tell her? What did Sarah Winchester believe? That's a mystery. We know what Sarah Winchester did. She stayed in New Haven, Connecticut for another three years, a traditional period of time to grieve your lost husband, but in 1884, she decided to leave her hometown forever. She moved across the country with her sister, Isabel, you can see in the photograph, and her sister's daughter, Marion, with a fancy overcoat in this picture. They moved across the country and settled in the Santa Clara Valley. Isabel and Marion lived in a house not too far away, and Sarah Winchester bought a parcel of land, 45 acres in the Santa Clara Valley. The land she bought had a house on it, a farmhouse. And Sarah Winchester was used to mansions on the East Coast, so she had to fix up the house a bit. She hired a team of 13 carpenters, and they began to add rooms to her house in her own designs for the next 30 years eight years. Construction continued. Sarah invited her niece Marion to live in the house for a period of time, and Sarah also had the companionship of this boy, Zip, her pet dog. 
Mrs. Winchester's construction project ended, however, on September 5th, 1922. That was the day Sarah Winchester passed away. Her house had grown from its original eight rooms to its current 160. Sarah Winchester passed away right here in her bedroom at the age of 83. She died of heart failure in her sleep and requested to be buried next to her husband and daughter back in New Haven, Connecticut. Our next stop is Sarah Winchester's seance room where she would supposedly contact spirits. Are you guys ready for this? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you down the next hallway since it's narrow. There is a ramp and a step coming up, so please be very careful. I'm going to sneak through you guys over here and show you the way. Just make sure we get through. This started a lot of rumors around town. This was where Mrs. Winchester would summon and release spirits during some secret seance. Or maybe something more ordinary. Maybe Mrs. Winchester liked the peace and quiet of this room so she could plan out what she would build next in her house. Mrs. Winchester also built some unusual things into this room. This is the only room that has bars on the windows. It also has an unusual way to get out. I should say ways. There's only one way to enter the seance room, and it's through this door. Sarah Winchester had the only key to this door. There are three doors that you can leave through, however. We could go back the door we came through. That's kind of boring. We've already seen over there. The second door leads to an eight-foot drop into a sink on the first floor, and I do not recommend taking door number two. But oh my, door number three might be interesting. This is it. Door number three is a closet. Oh but it has a door in the back. But this can only be open from the seance room. You cannot turn the latch for the door from the inside of this closet. If you go through that door, you're not coming back, at least not this way. Who's going first? Yeah? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Want to come on up? Yeah? Come on up. <laughs> We're going to open up that door in the back. Watch your head going through this door, too. Do we like the cheesy puns? I do. Yeah. Because I'll see you on the <gasps> other side. <laughs> no, did we not like